right, everyone, welcome back, welcome back. Hey, everyone, thanks for coming by. We are going to do a really exciting video. We're going to do nothing but sky washes. You can't believe how fun this is going to be. We're just taking it easy here. Let's just, we're, we're going to not go, you know, we're not going to be too serious today. We're just going to get in and do some watercolor uh, sky washes. I'm going to show you the whole process of creating a beautiful, uh, compositional chart like this so that you can put this in uh, your folders your uh, you know your studio you can have this with you you can pin this up on the wall and this is going to be a great tool for you to use going forward because you're gonna have all of this uh, sky wash uh, swatches that we're doing right now so that you can use these going forward in any of the paintings that you might be working on so just let's have fun come on by uh, you know stick with us here we're going to go step by step. I'm going to show you how to create these beautiful rectangles with sky washes, how to tape them off, how to label everything so that you have this for your studio and uh, you can reference this at all times doing your watercolor paintings. Okay. All right. Let's start out in just a few seconds. Let's take a quick uh, break as we uh, change out our camera angle here and we'll get started. Okay, welcome everyone. Thanks for coming by. This is Chris and let's uh, get started here. Um, oh, before we start, maybe I'll put some uh, paints into the uh, tray here, into my uh, palette. Uh, I forgot to do that. We'll just take a second to fill up the pan here. I usually use um, I usually used, uh, two bags here. This is just going to be a real fun uh, impromptu video we're just going to go over some skies some watercolor skies you saw the uh, painting or let's say our our sky chart of our sky paintings um, compositions in the beginning of the video so you see what we're going to do that's what we're going to uh, work on today and then basically uh, since I forgot to do my pull my palette up here with colors let's do it I usually have you know I'll just go over some stuff I I have lots of videos on palettes if you ever want you can just go back and type in Chris Petrie palette into YouTube and you'll see I have like a dozen videos on palettes in it. I cover everything really intensively, colors, uh, you know, how I keep my palettes, different palettes I use, why I use metal palettes over plastic ones. Sometimes I use plastic palettes, but not all that often. But I explain all of that kind of thing. So if you're kind of new to watercolor and you want to uh, get some more uh, information on palettes, I do have a lot of videos. You just type in my name, C-H-R-I-S, Chris. P-E-T-R-I, Petri, and then you type in the word palette, P-A-L-E-T-T-E, -T -T -E. and then you'll see all the videos I have, about 10 or a dozen or so, and uh, so I'll just put some colors, now what I like to do is when I keep my colors just in basically two bags, so this is handy when you travel, if you have like the cool colors in one bag and the warm colors in the other, so like all my reds, golds, um, you know, um, browns, those go in this bag, the warm colors, and then the blue colors, or the cool colors, blues, purple, greens, they go in this bag. So I just have two bags, warms, cools. I throw this in a small little leather uh, duffel bag or a small cloth duffel bag when I go out and paint, or when I go on vacation, or I go on small weekend outings, wherever I'm going, if I'm going to do anything traveling-wise, I just bring this with me, workshops, whatever it is. Take these with me, two bags, warms, cools, all the colors I use, plus maybe some extras. And I also have a third uh, bag of colors, which I are colors that I don't normally use all the time, but I do use them occasionally. So I have a third bag here, which are like, I, I would consider these like um, every once in a while colors, you know. So um, I have that. I also, I won't, I usually don't bring this on vacation or anything like that. I'll leave this in the studio, but I will sometimes. If it's like a week vacation or something, I would probably bring this one too with all the different colors, the, the different additional colors I might use occasionally. And so that's how you organize. I cut my uh, two paints and then when I fill in the pans here, I just go into the bag and look and see. Cobalt blue, I need that right now. Then I usually take a paper towel to open up the tops because sometimes they're hard to open. So if you just use a paper towel, it makes it a lot easier to open, less stressful on the hands. 
and then uh, we just fill up our palette a little bit with colors. I don't overfill them, I just kind of put some in there. A little more in this one here. So I have two cobalt blue um, pans because I use cobalt blue all the time. I use a lot of it, so that's why I have a couple extra. I have two pans of uh, cobalt blue in this palette that I have here. And what else do we need? Oh, cerulean blue. And I use mostly um, Windsor and Newton paints, so I'll use the paper towel again, just open up the paint. Holbein and, and Windsor and Newton I use. Uh, basically those are the two brands I constantly use most all the time. Once in a while I might try a new color or paint or something and I'll maybe pick up something else, but most times it's always those two. And we'll just make sure we, okay, we have everything we're going to need. We have all of our pallets, or our pans filled before we start. And this uh, is a fun way to create for yourself a chart of maybe some sky ideas so that maybe if you're going to be creating paintings, you know, over um, months and years, you can come back to this and look and say, oh, I remember I, I practiced some sky washes um, and I made a small composition chart with my skies, my sky, you know, washes. This way you have some ideas to draw from versus trying to maybe um, start looking through photos or books. You know, it's kind of a quick way to just remember back when you tried a few different sky washes and they came out good or or you learn something from the sky washes as you were doing them. So we'll, I have this uh, handy um, uh, template here that's by Fiskars. And it's got the rectangles, different rectangles. So I'm going to use this one here. And we'll just make some rectangles on our paper. And then we'll tape around them. So, But I'm just going to do this very uh, casually. I'm not going to really um, get... I'm not going to... I kind of, before we started here on the video, <clears throat> I just generally saw that I could fit three in across this paper and you see I added this is good when this type of thing happens you make a spot you know I had some paint on my hands here you take a little bit of water on a paper towel you see if you can blot it up a little bit like that that's good don't worry about stuff with watercolor you know when you're doing watercolors you're gonna have drips, spots, smudges just make it part of the whole process and you'll, you won't have a problem. And then we'll do another one here. They look good in paintings actually. Smudges and stuff, splashes. Little things like that make it more interesting when someone's looking at the painting. You know, in some cases it depends on what you like uh, as far as your artwork and the way you want your finished paintings to look. I like the messy kind of look for watercolors and so I like to see smudges and drips and splashes and all kinds of interesting stuff going on. There we go. One, two, six of those. Let's do another three. We have more room over here. Let's do three more. And you can just see I'm using a stencil. You could cut a piece of cardboard out. Maybe we'll measure it and we'll see what's... You know, you could cut a, just like a piece of cardboard out in a rectangular shape and then use that as your stencil as well. We'll, we'll do that too. We'll, come, we'll, we'll do the last one like that. So let's see. Uh, we'll, let me go find some cardboard. I'll be right back. A piece of uh, watercolor paper might work. Let's try that. So I'll just take a piece of watercolor paper and let me measure, we'll measure this and say we'll find out. Let's find out what, what these are. These are size wise. These are three and a half inches by two inches. Three and a half by two so I'll take um, let me get some cardboard actually. This is you could use watercolor paper, heavyweight car, uh, watercolor paper, but let's get some cardboard. Just give me one second, please. OK, 
Okay, I found some matte paper. Some, uh, you know, matte, some uh, watercolor matte for framing. And we said this was three and a half by two, three and a half by two. So we will just take our two inches, two inches, and then we're going to go three and a half this way. Three and a half here, like that. So this is a stencil. If you don't have a template, uh, like this orange one we're using, and you just want to do this exercise right away and start on it, and you don't want to worry about waiting to order it and all that, we're going to the store, no worries. So we do that, and then we just do, we could do another mark there, three and a half, and this way you get a perfect rectangle. And then I'll just, We'll just trim this down. We'll just use a pair of uh, scissors here. We'll just trim this down a little bit. We'll make ourselves a little template. And we'll just trim this down real nice here. And there we go. So now we can use something like this instead of, Again, if you don't want to worry about ordering something or going to the store, to, you know, you might not go to the store all that often to buy art stuff only, and you want to do this exercise right away or, you know, over the next couple days or so, that's all. You just take some thicker, heavier uh, cardboard or heavier, like a matte paper, even heavier weight uh, watercolor paper works too, and we'll just make our last one like this. So that's also a way we can do it, or you can just measure them on the paper. It takes more time though to do that. But this makes it more organized looking. It looks good. This way if you do create this type of um, chart for yourself, for fun, just to have in your studio with you, or your, you know, to keep with you when you're painting and you want to refer back to it, this is a great way. You make it kind of neat, looks good. You've got spacings are good, looks kind of symmetrical. Makes it more pleasant looking when you're going to use it and refer back to it versus if it's just kind of all mishmashed. Okay, now I'll take some uh, tape. Let's get some watercolor tape here. So I'll use some tape. And what we'll do is once we tape this, then we'll we'll take a break. But let's do some tape. So that's all I have to do is tape one side like this. Go all the way across this way, tape the paper across this way, across the bottom. There we go. And you just go right around, starting from the outside, like that. Across the, so basically we're just going to tape around these individual boxes that we created by a template or a small cardboard. Uh, guide to use and then let's go right across with the There we go another one here. So you go around the whole outside first then we go And start going you could do the top Down or you start from the bottom up, but I would do all the same So I would go all the way across with your um, Parallel uh, horizontal tape first and then we'll do the verticals last so we got all of our horizontal tape we just keep taping right down right along the uh, pencil marks take your time take your time with this because sometimes the lines get a little confusing I sometimes myself uh, start to tape off uh, a section I don't want to but I just I lose track so I'm going carefully here now we've got the entire outside done. We've got our horizontals done across on the tops and bottoms all the way across. Now we just do our verticals. This vertical is completed. Now we do this one. And you don't worry about your tape, how much tape you're using because you might have to waste a little bit of tape and but it's better to do it this way than trying to you could just use a wider tape actually. You can be creative as much as you want and create these charts the way you want. But I find this is the easiest way to do it. 
a little bit of a thinner tape and then I can just make sure I get everything accurate and this is good. Then once you have it all accurate, you kind of just make sure it's all pressed down around your your borders so that the water doesn't watercolor paint doesn't leak under your tape and kind of ruin the effect of some nice clean crisp lines around your sky washes we're going to create. So I think that's good. And if you see some white paper you don't want to have any you might want to preserve your white paper. So that's where I would just you want to cover up some of that so that you want to have all your white paper looking good on your chart here. You just go over any areas you see that have um, paper left. Watercolor paper left so you don't have any watercolor paper there. And I think I'll get maybe some wider tape. <clears throat> I think I have some wider tape over here. So I have some wider tape I'll use over on this right hand side because I have a really wide spot of paper over here. So I want to cover that all. So I'll just do that. Cover that whole wide area there with some wider tape. And again, if you have a really large sheet of paper, you can just use this wider tape if you need to. If you have some wider uh, artist tape. But I have just the two sizes, basically. And that's good. Let's take a quick break. We'll come right back and we'll start in and we'll start doing our sky washes. We'll, and then once we're done with our sky washes, we're going to peel the tape all off and then we'll label each one. We'll label them on the tape first, and then when we peel off the tape, we'll relabel them. So we'll be careful to do that so we kind of remember what we're going to sort of, you know, name our each of our sky washes. It might be, you know, a diagonal sky wash, a wet sky wash, a dry sky wash, whatever it is. We'll, we'll, we'll go along and just try some different ideas. And again, we're just doing this for fun, having some uh, fun in the studio here, trying out new things. Uh, this is always good to do to try it when you, does this make sense? As a watercolor artist, be creative, have some fun, just sometimes don't have any game plan, just go grab some paper, put some tape on it, and start doing some sky washes, maybe do some, uh, maybe do some mountain washes. You can create some mountain ideas or some grass or fields. You can make all kinds of these type uh, charts for yourself so that this way when you are painting and doing um, uh, paintings in the future, you can refer back to them and, and, and the, you could look at them and say, oh yeah, I remember I did this, I did that. And you'll, you'll actually recall it better, and then you'll kind of remember what you did, and then it's more easy to uh, accomplish the task that you're doing at the time. So let's be right, come right back, and we'll get started. All right, we're starting back up again here. We're going to get some painting and sky washes going. We are doing a real fun, free type of exercise here. We're going to do some compositions with uh, sky washes. I hope you're having fun with this and um, feel free as an artist um, to just, you know, sometimes kick back and do some fun exercises, grab some paper, put some tape on there, make some uh, small compositions, you know, hash out some, you know, square off some stuff with some tape and just have some fun creative ideas. Maybe we'll do uh, trees next time or uh, mountains next time or maybe water. But for this time we're going to do skies and um, we're going to have a great time doing this and uh, I hope you have a good time with this. Let's have fun with this. So I'm going to go completely from memory here. I'm not going to really so much refer back to, I'm just going to from memory try to put as many sky washes on here as I can recall that I've sort of memorized or have committed to memory over my years of watercolor painting. So we'll talk about the techniques as we go, the colors, you know, that. And uh, again, I'm just doing this free form uh, and we'll see how it turns out. And uh, I hope you'll enjoy this. Let's, I always remember, uh, always please remember, uh, subscribe if you can. Down on the right hand side of the uh, screen here, there's a subscribe button. I make uh, new videos uh, every week, watercolor, everything watercolor. So you're going to have these great videos every week, teaching videos on exercises like this and we do paintings we do all kinds of paintings seascapes landscapes cityscapes figure painting flowers we do every type of painting you can imagine in watercolor so everything is watercolor if you are trying to learn watercolor you, you have to come here every week come back watch the videos even if you might not like the video what I'm painting let's say you don't like flowers all that much if you watch the painting though you're gonna learn all about the techniques of watercolor so 
no matter what subject matter you're painting, you're always using the same techniques over and over and over. So if you learn all the techniques, uh, you'll pick up a lot quicker. So I encourage everyone, even if you're not so keen on uh, a specific subject matter, boats or flowers, or you might not like those subjects, that's fine. But if you watch the videos, you will learn all about the techniques because I, I talk about it as I go through each video all the time every week so you can learn more and more so if you hit the subscribe button and you click the notification bell next to it this way you're alerted each time I make a new video and you'll know what exact time and day it is this way you can plan your schedule and plan a time to sit down and do a little bit of watercolor painting all right so now let's get started I'm using a Raphael brush here number eight watercolor brush and that's a sable brush watercolor brush round brush it's got a good point on it and this is nice. This is Arches paper. Arches is gray paper. Any kind of Arches paper I recommend if you, you know, if for finished paintings. Um, so this is what the Arches rough paper looks like. It's got the orange cover. And you can also use uh, Arches satin paper, which is pink. You got the pink cover. That's the satin paper, which is great too. I use these two all the time in my paintings. And <clears throat> probably my ultimate favorite is Fabriano paper. It comes in pads. And, you know, when I'm doing a finished painting, I'll use the arches. Or if I'm doing YouTube videos, I'll use the best paper I can, which is the arches or Fabriano. This is the student grade Fabriano, which I use all the time. And it's uh, Studio Watercolor is the name of it. Studio Watercolor. And it's a pad of uh, 50 sheets. And uh, 140 pounds, 300 gram. And uh, just tons of paper here. A whole... You can paint and paint and paint all to your heart's content. And you have tons of paper. I bought like three or four of these just recently. So I have plenty of stock keep me going. I hope you'll do the same stock up on your papers and uh, this way you never run out. You always have paper to use. And uh, let's get started here on the paintings. Um, so what, on the first one we're going to do a sky. Let's say, let's do our simple, we're just going to do a graded wash. Uh, wet wet and wet graded wash just right down the paper like this simple sky wash one of the first ones I learned and I still use it all the time let me find my magic marker so we're gonna call this uh, graded wash and we'll relabel it once we're done and we peel all the tape off but let's keep track of it now here graded wash And then we can even uh, wet into wet. So I'll just make the note that we're using wet into wet method, which is let's dampen the paper first, like this with fresh clean water all the way across it. Scrub on a little bit of fresh clean water, like so. Then we say, all right, let's make our sky wash simple wet into wet, graded wash. Let's use some French ultramarine blue, some cobalt blue, a little bit of raw umber to gray down that blue just a touch. Cerulean blue, let's use some cerulean blue over right here and I think we have it. Maybe even a little bit of Payne's gray and ivory black. To make it even more interesting. There we go. So I pre-wet the paper and I just put out the color on there. Raw umber, French ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue. We'll make it darker at the top. Infuse in some watercolor paint straight out of the palette right into the onto the paper up high get it nice and dark up top here It's always going to lighten 
one of the first things you're going to notice when you're painting watercolors. Uh, you'll, you'll always re recall that watercolor dries a lot lighter. So when you put it on, it looks dark, but this is going to lighten up a lot. So remember, go darker when you're painting and you think, oh, that's too dark. No, just add a little more paint to it because trust me, it's going to lighten up. And then you're going to say, I wish I added more paint to that. So now we're just going to finish as we go down the page, down the paper with some cerulean blue maybe. And you let the water do the work and the paint do the work and the paper. You're not really doing much work here. You're just having fun adding your mixtures of blue onto the paper. And that's all you do. And you can leave a little couple spots of white paper if you want. If not, you can go over that and just let the paper and the paint and the water do the work for you. And you get a nice graded wash. And you can even add a touch of cadmium orange at the bottom. For the sky, for the area where the um, sky meets the land area, so we're we're pretending that there's land down below our sky wash here. So you'll always get a little bit of that orangey gold uh, color at the base of your skies. And there you go. Simple graded wash, wet into wet. We wet the paper first added our sky washes on there and let it just flow down nice and slow. You still have time when you're working with Arches paper or Fabriano paper you can still add in some darks if you want. Like that. And we're just going to let that be as it is. A simple graded wash sky wash. Okay let's get started on another. Um, now let's we're going to do an a la prima sky wash, so we will, we're going to do a, uh, a la prima. And here we can just La Prima. Let's take uh, Cerulean Blue, French Ultramarine Blue, Cobalt Blue, the three mixed together, a little bit of raw umber just to add in a little bit of warm to that. And that's our start. And notice I just used the damp brush and the rest is all color from the palette. I'm not adding any water to this. So this is really just a damp brush and the paint. Okay, so a la prima is we just have some fun and go in and start putting in some maybe cloud shapes up top here. So you're almost painting around some cloud shapes here like this. I rinse off my brush and I dry off my brush. You can also use, a, I use this all the time, I use a tissue to dry off my brush, so I rinse off my brush in the clean water I have next to me. I dry off the brush a little bit, damp brush after you put on that first wash, and then you just blend around. And when you blend around, you create your clouds maybe for here. Then you can start, I rinse my brush off again, dry off a little bit of water. And maybe you can start adding in a little bit of the first bits of some shadowing under there. And then we take some of that. There's some shadows under those clouds with some of the uh, Payne's Gray, Ivory Black, and you can add in some shadowing colors under the clouds. Rinse off the brush, dry off the brush, so it's a damp brush now, and then you just blend that in nice. So now you have some clouds, and then maybe here you have some more clouds. 
and maybe these are smaller clouds so you can make them smaller here cobalt blue, cerulean blue, french ultramarine blue you can highlight some of the so now you have some cloud shapes here and some more cloud shapes at the bottom and again we're just having fun just play around with the paints have a good time maybe blot up a little bit of spot spots here and there if you want when you're painting your clouds in your skies and your sky washes and the idea is just to create some sky washes on these compositional charts here we're making just so you have a feel for how you'd like to create your future sky washes all of you are going to do different types of sky washes some of you are going to have uh, more interesting sky washes that look different than mine but you like it better and that's fine you create your own ideas when you're painting and the fun thing is when you create your own sky washes you know it's going to be something you've discovered your, yourself and you, you know you're going to enjoy that versus uh, not having tried to do some different ideas. So if the more ideas you try like this, the more fun you'll have creating your uh, future paintings. Okay, so there we go. A la prima sky wash. I did not pre-wet my paper. I just went in with my dark first, and then we just created that. We created the dark up top to create some cloud shapes. We call that uh, negative shape painting. We paint a dark around the clouds and the clouds appear with the dark paint. As we paint the dark paint, the clouds appear. So we have clouds and then we just blotted up some water here and there like that. So that's fine. You can add, blot up a little bit with your tissue if you want. <clears throat> you can also add some of that golden orangey color at the uh, bottom of the uh, painting a little bit that indicates that it's starting to get closer to the ground level. The uh, little bit of that warmer color reflecting up from the Earth's surface you have warmer tones, uh, hues. There we go. Okay, so we've done two so far. Let's do one more and then we'll take a break. Um, let's do the wet into wet horizontal sky wash. So we can call this um, the, uh, let's call it angled sky wash. You can name these anything you want as you go. I'm just, I'm going to do mine like this. You can, you know, create your own names for your, uh, your sky washes. You can do them in different orders. You can create something totally different than what I'm doing. I'm just kind of like trying to create skies that I'm familiar with that I usually uh, use when I paint. You can create your own. You might you might actually do a lot of you know different sky washes more than what I do. I tend to kind of go back and do the same ones typically in my paintings most times. Uh, so here let's do the angled sky wash. So what I'll do here is I'll get the brush. I'll wet my brush a little bit with some water and we'll, we'll do this one a little bit of, a little bit of a mixture of wet and wet let's just go on an angle across with a little bit of water on there not the whole paper just some streaks across on an angle like so just so we get some water on the paper to give it that little bit of that uh, wet into wet look then let's get let's get creative let's do more of a, a brown burnt sienna brown um, cerulean blue. I'm going for it. I'm mixing some colors around here. I'm not going to get boring with every... Like let's mix some different colors in here. So let's do more of a more of a sunset type feel. We're going to go across like that. 
and I'll just kind of take my brush. You can see here I'm just going across on an angle the same way we put the water on, that fresh clean water. And there we go. Look at that. There we go. Maybe a little bit of uh, red in there, some uh, cerulean. Uh, let's say this would be uh, alizarin crimson, a little bit of um, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, rose matter. Let's add some red into our sky. It's kind of a sunset sky. Just put some colors on there, some orange and yellow, maybe some uh, yellow ochre, some cadmium yellow, like that. And just let it flow on. And I think that's all we have to really do. Leave some white paper, I think, would look good. And we have the angle look. And then you can maybe even take some, some tissue and you can even fold up. Sometimes this is a good technique. You can fold up your tissue a little bit and make a little bit of a sharp line on your tissue. And then you can go across and do a couple, a couple of passes along this here to just make a little bit of a change in there we go now remember these are just sky washes so you're the artist you're going to create your own sky washes have fun with it uh, maybe we'll add a little bit of blue up top There we go. You can infuse while it's still damp. You can infuse a quick couple uh, bits of uh, darker blue if you want up at top, uh, the top of it, and you can bring that blue down into the lower section too, but just a little, not too much. I'm not going to leave much white paper on. I'm going to probably cover all, all of it with wash, so I won't leave any white paper on this one. That's a nice sunset style sky. Maybe out west you can think of some like <clears throat> southwestern skies, you know, with those rocky mountains and stuff. So you can create anything you want. You can go and refer back into photographs online, whatever you want to do. You can use photographs for your references. You can use this to practice first if you want to get started. And then you can eventually go and do a couple of research uh, type projects where you do this same kind of thing. But you just go and you go find photographs online. You find your favorite skies online that you like from photographs. And then you try doing that same idea onto paper, onto the watercolor paper. And you create a second um, chart of washes, sky washes. So this is just your first try here, your first go at these type skies, and then you're going to try some more, some other ones that you might like, or even go through some of your watercolor, your favorite watercolor books. If you have some uh, books of watercolor paintings, you can try that. Some of the old master paintings, you can look at some Winslow Homer, uh, some Andrew Wyeth paintings. You can look at anything you want. Try to create some charts from what you're viewing, whether it's photographs or books, what have you, or even outdoors. If you're looking out into nature, you can copy that. All right, let's take a quick break. We did three skies. We'll take a break. We'll come back and we'll start on another three. Okay, we're picking right back up again, everyone. Thanks again for uh, sticking in here and doing the uh, sky washes along with us here, and we're having a fun time, a great time. These are the kind of great uh, exercises and compositions you can do uh, with your watercolors, um, where there's it's low stress and more fun because you're just trying out new ideas. Does this make sense? When you do uh, some fun exercises, you're going to incorporate that into your uh, your painting and your practice time. Because if you're trying to do serious paintings every time, I used to do that years ago. I tried to like create masterpiece paintings every time I, you know, got my paper and my pencil and watercolor uh, paints and, and brushes, and it just turned out like I just I, I lost 
um, focus on just remembering that as watercolor artists, we constantly have to do some sidetrack type ideas, practice on things. Um, sometimes we just need to put our paints down for a couple weeks or a month and just practice drawing skills, stuff like that. Mix it all up. If you're a watercolor artist and you're out there now and you're saying to yourself, how am I going to make my watercolors better? If you just mix things up, try different things, don't get too concerned about one particular, um, you know, unless you have a show or something where you have to create 10 or 20 paintings, yeah, then you have to stick to it and, you know, come up with your paintings you have to do for your show or your exhibit or whatever. I understand some of you out there, you're painting for shows and exhibits and things, but for maybe some of you who are not maybe painting in shows and things like that or having, you know, working towards uh, creating paintings for a show or maybe you're not selling your paintings. If you're selling your paintings, you're probably trying to do your paintings every once in a while, you know, get your, you know, two or three paintings done a, uh, a week or maybe, you know, five a month. Build up your stockpile and this way you have paintings that, you know, you can sell uh, at local art fairs and things like that. So I know everyone's kind of different out there. Everyone's got different situations, but for the most part, again, these are fun to do low stress, you don't have to worry, you're just putting some tape on some watercolor paper and trying out new ideas. You save this in your studio, uh, you know, in your, you know, in your place, you know, you're painting, put these uh, to the side, save them, and whenever you're going to be painting, you know, a, a scene where you're looking for ideas for sky washes, you have it. So let's continue on here. Now, uh, let's clean up the palette a little bit. I'm going to take uh, some water on a paper towel and let's clean up the palette. And I don't want to go too long without making sure I clean the palette because we're starting to mix a lot of colors on here and that can kind of make unpleasant washes. So let's get our palette back clean again so we can start back in with fresh colors. Then uh, let's empty our water. So I have some water. It's looking like this. I don't know if you can see that. It's a little bit murky. Let me change my water. Here, this way we have some fresh clean water. I just have my water bucket here. Fresh clean water. Now on this next one here, let's do a Let's call this one a dark cloud. Dark clouds. Ooh, that's mysterious. Dark clouds. <clears throat> that looks fun. Let's try that out. So, we're going to uh, get some paint on our palette again. Let's say we're going to use uh, our blues. French ultramarine blue. Cobalt blue. I rinse my brush off. I When I rinse my brush off, I always try to either dry it on my apron, which I have on, or a paper towel, or a sponge, or a tissue. This way, if you rinse off your brush, and then you go back into your palette over and, you know, over, and over again, it's going to wind up making large puddles in your paint, in your palette. You, you want to try to avoid that. So the way to do that is whenever you rinse off your brush, you try to use either a sponge, uh, you know, some paper, you know, some uh, tissues. I use tissues sometimes. I use my apron. So this way I'm not taking water dripping off my brush and going into my paints because that'll just make puddles in my paint and that's going to, then we won't be able to get our nice, rich, beautiful colors here like we have. So that's just something to remember. So I rinse my brush, dry off a little bit of the water off the brush on the tissue here. And we're going to go in and cobalt blue. Cerulean blue down here, and uh, maybe we'll do some, we'll mix in some Prussian blue over here, and then maybe some raw umber over here. So we're going to have, let's keep it a little simpler, maybe, yeah, maybe that looks pretty good. Maybe some raw umber and burnt umber over here, Prussian blue here. And then our three blues that we use on a constant basis, French ultramarine, cobalt blue, cerulean blue. There we have it. We have our colors all set up in our palette, ready to go. Now we rinse our brush off again. Let's do the same thing as we did in the 
uh, angled sky. Let's get some a little bit of water on the paper here, but not everywhere. So let's just kind of hit and miss, intermittent, intermittent water sp spots, you know, some washes on there, but not everywhere. There we go. Now, let's get our bluish colors. Put on some blue colors there to start with. That's our most natural go-to colors for our skies. Do you agree, agree with that? Then, and you can see, hit and miss. I didn't paint everywhere. I kind of put some blue around there. Skies are very free looking usually. I noticed that with um, over the years painting skies. They're more free looking, uh, creative looking. They're, they're not extremely... Um, planned out most times so we just if you can kind of create that same idea and then we have some Prussian blue let's do, add some Prussian blue to that there we go now we have some burnt sienna burnt umber raw umber let's add a couple with some Prussian blue. There we go. Add some darks. Just add a couple dark spots. Add some darks. Prussian blue, raw umber. Like that. That can be really awesome sky color and sky wash that you can use in your watercolors. That's going to make it look really beautiful. So if you're doing like a really beautiful, let's say, a uh, street scene, you're doing a beautiful street scene, and, you know, people are not going to be paying attention to the sky all that much because they're looking at the beautiful buildings you created, you know, like you might have created some beautiful buildings in your street scene with a street and some figures. You can kind of do a really cool sky like this where, where you mix, a sky wash like this where you mix some colors in there, blues, and then you get in some warm colors like that and uh, some uh, leave a little bit of white paper here and there maybe a couple spots there and here and there like that maybe you want to cover up your white paper maybe leave just a few white ups there here and there but that's something you can do gorgeous looking you can even add some more darks go with some more burnt sienna burnt umber for, um, Prussian blue. Just get in there, free kind of flick it, fl fl you know, just throw it on the paper there. Look at that. And it's going to dry lighter. Remember, we, we keep saying that here on this uh, video. This is, these are all going to dry lighter. You can kind of see up here, right? It dried lighter than it looked probably when I was first painting it. So that's the same thing. And then if you want to go in and you say, oh, I think I went a little too dark, no problem. You take a little bit of paper, uh, tissue and you can blot up a couple of spots. Just like that. You can make it lighter if you think you went too dark. But that's all. So you have kind of those stormy looking clouds in here. And, and you know, mixing in some colors to make it look a little more exciting than just going with a blue sky everyone everyone knows blue skies are kind of you know everyone does the blue sky look and we could do we could add in some color we add in some of those umbers and siennas to make it a little more interesting does that make sense as an artist we are trying to enhance and make things look more exciting than they really are <clears throat> if we just try to paint what we're seeing and we don't add any extra excitement to it, it's probably not going to look that great. So, here we go. I went back in with a little more dark, Prussian blue. There we go. Always remember, no one's ever going to complain that you did something really exciting on your watercolors, right? <laughs> hey, always remember that. If you do something too boring, people are going to complain about it. But if you do something really exciting, 
throw on some paint on that paper looking really good, you're gonna the people are gonna be happy. Your customers, people that are looking at your artwork are gonna get excited and splash on a little bit there. All right, now we're gonna move right along here. Let's get another wash going here for our sky washes. Let's do um, let's do a real simple um, wash. So I'm gonna go in. Let me clean up my palette once again. Wipe up my paints, get a nice clean palette again to start our next wash. Okay, this one, we're going to keep it really, I'm going to change my water. I want fresh clean water for this one, absolutely fresh clean water. Then I'm going to create some big, large white clouds. So here I sketch in, you know, I, you notice I didn't sketch in on every um, sky wash that we did, but here I want to sketch in an idea of a nice, big, powerful white cloud going all the way across the paper. So this might be a scene where you have a field or some ocean, maybe you maybe have some sand on a beach or something, or, or you're out in the farmlands and you want just a big white cloud there, powerful white cloud. And maybe it's like a, you know, kind of like a, not too much a sunny day, but lots of clouds in the sky. So let's do that, a big white cloud going across. And I think we should be good. We're going to make that cloud shape like this. And we're going to keep this one really light. We're not going to use a lot of paint. So, let's get started. Let's do some cerulean blue. We're going to keep this one light. Cerulean blue, uh, cobalt blue, maybe a touch of raw umber. And let's go up here and let's... Again, it's going gonna, it's gonna to dry lighter, so... I get a fresh tissue. Keep changing your tissues when you're working with tissues and drying off your brush like so. Rinse the brush, go to the tissue, dry off some of the water. And now you can just, and you don't have to stick with your pencil. And remember, if you put a pencil line on there, it's just a, a guide to what you want to do. You can go and create other ideas off of that pencil line. You don't have to stick to that pencil line every time. So you just remember the pencil line's there to kind of show you you want to keep a cloud formation going on an angle across your paper, but you don't have to necessarily follow exactly the, the line. It's not a big deal. So there we go. There we go. Look at that. Then, what do we do here? That is clouds here, sky wash here, maybe some French ultramarine blue, there we go, French ultramarine blue over here, there we go, white cloud here, now we're going to go with uh, ivory black and Payne's gray. Just a little though, not too much. Don't go crazy with this, you know. There we go. Maybe you can even add some umber to that, raw umber. And that is going to be our shadow color underneath this cloud. And then you just kind of have fun, put the paint around here and there, but you want to leave it very light. Let's leave this very light, so we're just going to... Like that. So 
So I pick up my shadowy color, the ivory black and Payne's gray, like that. That's the bottom of the cloud here. Then you can make another cloud shape here. You can take uh, some tissue and kind of blot up the bottom area. Make some more cloud shapes there. You can take that dark, Payne's Gray. And then you have some more cloud shapes over here on top of this. There we go. Maybe some cadmium lemon to give some variety to it. Add a little bit of that touch, just a tiny bit of cadmium lemon yellow to your clouds. And it, break, it takes it to a whole nother level when you add a little touch of warm color. All this is cool colors, the uh, Payne's Gray and the Blues. You add a touch of that cadmium lemon yellow and then it transforms into a beautiful, interesting looking uh, sky with colors, cloud shapes. Then you can go in more cerulean blue. And you can add just a touch of colors. Straight paint though, no water, just straight paint. Go right into the straight paint here, tube paint. And touch in a couple spots, like that. Fade it up a little bit. Maybe a little bit of the Payne's Gray, straight paint. And you add a couple of these really strong darks, and that gives you that layering effect. white paper right at the top of the cloud. That's the brightest part of the cloud is right at the top. Just like that. And then if you want you can go in and tap a little bit of paint off if you think you want to soften it up a little bit. Softening up is fine. If you want to soften it up it's going to dry lighter though. Remember that. So you can take some French ultramarine blue and even do a few little taps in there of some French ultramarine blue, and then blend that up a little bit. Remember, it's going to dry lighter, so it looks exciting and really, you know, does that make sense? It, it, it looks real exciting and dark and vibrant when you're painting it on, but it's going to dry lighter, so you want to make sure you, you know, use that to your advantage by adding even extra paint, straight paint, out of your palette. And if you just tap in a couple spots here and there, and then just blend it in a little bit, just so that it's not completely, uh, but that really does add quite a bit of excitement to the sky wash as you go. And then you can go up here too and And we did add cadmium lemon yellow, so we can add more of that. It kind of, it kind of, as we mix more paint on here, as you can see, the cadmium lemon yellow sort of blended in so much that we really couldn't see it all that much. So I added a little more there, just as you can see, a little more. And that's good. That looks fine. And some more like that. And then 
if you want you can just tap on some water with your brush just to make it look more loose and diffused looking so I'm adding some fresh clean water just splashing it on there here and there and just see what happens these are just fun exercises fun compositions to do there we go don't worry about things have a fun time there we go. Okay, let's take another break. We've been working 20 minutes already. So we've got already five done. Let's keep pushing on here. We'll keep working at this. You can always break this you know, up into a couple of different days if you want. Again, I always say, please subscribe. Hit that subscribe button below on the right-hand side. You can hit the notification bell as well. This way you kind of know when every week when we're putting out new videos, you'll know just the right time when they come out and you can watch them quick and uh, maybe join along with us too and grab your brushes and your paper and paint along with us But we're, we're coming along really nicely here. We've got about More than halfway. We're halfway completed here with our compositions of sky washes So uh, please stick stick with us here We're just going to take a quick break and we're going to come back and we're going to do some more really exciting sky washes I'm going to try to really kick it up a notch here and see if I can do something even really more more exciting than we have here Let's let's try some Really incredible sky washes as we finish up going on the rest of these uh, one, two, three, and four. Okay, we're getting back here. We're getting uh, started again. Let's start out. Let's do, let's keep this one a simple one here. Let's wet into wet. So let's do a wet in wet. We'll keep labeling our. Wet and wet. Sky wash. Green. Gray. So you can label these, you know, different colors. You could create a whole different chart of sky washes using different colors. You might make them all graded washes but you use different colors so that you can kind of see how they look with uh, different colors. Um, we're going to use this one here, wet into wet, sky wash, green gray. Let me take some clean fresh water. And I'm just going to wet the whole paper liberally. The whole swatch here we're going to do Get some good fresh clean water on there. Let's let that soak in for a second. Now let's come over to our palette. And again, I have my tissue, my apron. I use my apron most often. I always wear an apron usually when I work uh, in my studio here. But uh, you can use, uh, I like to show the tissue so that you see what I'm doing. So I take my watercolor brush, I rinse it off in the clean water, I tap off the water, the excess water on the tissue. This way I'm not flooding my watercolor palette here with water so that the paint becomes diluted. We want strong, fresh, vibrant colors coming from our palette onto our paper. So to avoid flooding out your watercolor palette with water, which I used to do myself, I, I'm not trying to criticize anybody if you're doing that. It's just, I used to do it too. I forgot to dry off my brush a little. So I used to always take all that water that was on the brush when I rinsed my brush and I would go in and do the, you know, uh, water would start to flood out my palette. Do you find, does it ever happen to you? The, uh, you know, your your pans get full of water? That, that's not a good thing. That really can really ruin the, the look of those vibrant colors you need. So that's why I always go with a rinse the brush tap onto a sponge. If you don't have a sponge, you can use your uh, apron, which I use, or you can use a tissue or paper towel or anything else, you, you know, any kind of type of or type of paper you have, you know, whatever. Everyone uses different things, you know, be creative. So we wet our paper, good. Now we're going to go with a, let's go with a, a graded wash. So we're going to do a graded wash like here but we're going to use green and gray. So let's go with sap green. 
let's use some cooler Viridian. And then we're going to need some Payne's Gray too, like that, with a little bit of green in there. So we can take some pain or some Viridian with some Payne's Gray, maybe a little bit of Ivory Black. So we have a grayish color over here. Maybe a little raw umber there too. Let's go with some raw umber in that. So now we're kind of looking at a sap green, viridian, and then some Payne's gray, ivory black, with some viridian in there too. So that's our three colors we're going to use. And then maybe a little bit of uh, burnt umber too over here. And you're going to see how good this looks. Okay, so let's go in. I'm going to add a little more. I want to get more, more color, more exciting color in here. Because I know it's going to dry lighter. So if you keep that in your mind all the time when you're painting watercolors, it's always going to dry lighter. So go darker. Go darker. Don't uh, feel like you have to hold back. Add more color, more exciting colors and washes to your to your paintings because it's going to dry lighter so we already know that okay let's start it out here wow look at that beautiful Woo! <laughs> looking good there we go we're getting the paint on the paper some dark look see that that's all we got to do and then Maybe a little bit of cerulean down here. Add it up here too, a little bit, but down here, a little bit of cerulean. And there we have it. That's all we need. And we could do more. You can mix up some uh, more of the uh, Payne's Gray, Ivory Black, Viridian. There you go, add a little dark up top like that. That's good. And then maybe burn umber. Add some burnt umber in there. Add a couple, and then a couple. Whew. That's all you need. That's it, let the rest of it just work. There you go, it works perfect. You add a little couple splashes of fresh clean water on there and you can just let that go, let it sit. It'll just beautifully dry and you'll have a gorgeous uh, sky wash, you'll see that uh, it's going to look great once that dries and if you want you can add burnt umber and you can add a little bit of darker up there like that and there you have a nice cool greens and blacks and browns warm and cool but more toward the cool side with the well this is probably more toward the I would say this is really nice. It's like a grayish, so it's kind of like a, a warm and cool sky with some greens, some browns, some warms. A good like uh, seascape type of sky. Graded wash, simple. You just wet the paper, get your colors laid out onto your palette. Like we said, it was basically, uh, we're using our greens, sap green, viridian green, our two blacks. Uh, Payne's Gray and Ivory Black with a little bit of raw umber mixed in there and burnt umber and you just kind of go from there and you get this kind of a look and you don't have to worry there we go all right let's start another one let's do a beautiful sunset sky where it's warm maybe some reds some oranges, some yellows, let's do that. And again, I do my typical routine all the time, as you know. I wet my paper towel, I come in, I wipe up the paint. We're starting a new swatch, so we need a fresh palette with no colors on it. Like that. Then, we're ready to start. Let's just do a graded wash so we're going to say a sunset sunset 
a graded wash graded wash and then you could put even like red yellow so our predominant colors are going to be red and yellow okay let's do the same thing let's get a light wash of clean water on this just a light dampening of the paper that's it then we're going to go in and we're going to start mixing our washes let's say blue french ultramarine blue and burnt umber up at the top here so let's create our sky color right up here in our palette french ultramarine blue burnt umber dark more french ultramarine blue make it more of a blue rinse the brush then we're going to go into our reds alizarin crimson cadmium yellow uh, cadmium red cadmium orange cadmium yellow there you go that's all we need so here we've created our sky wash colors we know we need these colors French ultramarine blue, burnt umber to get that real dark, rich, beautiful, dark, dark blue. Then we go into our reds, our really warm sunset colors, alizarin crimson, cadmium red. Then we work into our cadmium orange and our cadmium yellow. So that's what we use here. We just put it out onto the palette and then we say, okay, let's get going here. Burnt umber, much more uh, blue. So you got like two thirds French ultramarine blue, one third burnt umber, just to keep it real dark. Wow! Look at that! Bam! Look how simple that is. Just that one wash right across the top with that dark blue. We could take some of the cobalt blue. There we go. Go across there with a little bit of cobalt blue as we're coming down the paper. Then we're going to go right in. Alizarin crimson. Cadmium red. Orange. Let's get those in. Oh, look at that, how great that looks. Blend it up in there. Just like that, blend, it, blend the red back up into the blue. You'll get a little bit of a purple look to it, and then right into the cadmium orange and cadmium yellow. There. Blend that up too. So you want to get those, you want to get those colors though. So make sure you get the reds from the dark blues, red, orange, and yellow like that and there you have it look at that a beautiful sunset color blend it up blend it up blend blend it in splash a little bit of water on there and there and that's just a beautiful I'll put some more cadmium red in there don't be afraid to add in your colors and, and make it look more exciting. Again, try to make things more exciting than what you, th you think you need. That's good. Maybe some purple, since we do have purple up in here. Let's add some French ultramarine violet. Like that. And then we just make sure we have those parallel lines going across like that and then if you see that you need to blot up a little bit of paint uh, a little bit of water and paint because sometimes that paint and water can puddle up at the bottom just tap up a little bit just tap up a little tiny bit of paint and water from the bottom of your composition so that it doesn't flood out and make unpleasant back runs as they call them 
and that's a gorgeous sunset. You could add really dark darks over the top of this once this one, if this dries 100%, you could add a beautiful sailboat with some really darks on the top of this. Uh, you could do a skyline of a city scene with a city skyline along the bottom of this with dark darks like this. Your blues and browns, you know, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, raw umber. You can add some skyline. So you can add, these are just sky washes we're doing right now. But you can add, once you do your sky wash across your whole paper, then you can add in your foreground or your middle distance or distance, if you want to say. Like, you can create more subject matter on top of your sky washes once you're completed. So that's the great thing about sky washes. You can get them down onto your paper, any one of these, and then go over the top of it. You can go over with some uh, sailboats here, maybe some sailboats or a little bit of a shoreline, maybe a seascape. Here, maybe you go over like with some city buildings, some skylines of some city skyscrapers along here. Here, maybe some boats. Here, maybe you're just going to do maybe a beach scene with some uh, sand and, and maybe a couple figures, you know, you can create your, you can mix and match these. It's sort of like mixing and matching things. Take any of these sky washes and you can use them in your paintings and use further ideas, further subject matter to blend in and mix and match with your sky washes. So let's keep going here. Let's get another sky wash going here. I'm going to change the water here. Okay, so I just fresh clean water. I'm going to do the same thing I do. I'm going to get my paper towels. I'm going to make sure I start with a fresh clean palette. So I'm going to just get my colors off my palette here. Okay, now I'm going to see here. I got some. So we have here. I'm going to see if I can find some interesting things to create. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> now we're going to go with... Uh, you know what? We've been working 15 minutes. We did spend some time on this. Uh, let's take a quick break. Five minutes. We'll come back. We'll do our last two sky washes and, uh, and we'll be all set. All right, everyone. Thanks again for sticking in with us here. You've made it. We're right to the last few uh, sky wash compositional uh, paintings we have here for our sky wash chart. Again, this uh, if you're a watercolor artist and you want to have some reference material with you at all times, paint along with us here, just like we did going through this whole process. Get your um, interesting looking sky washes uh, onto your paper, and then uh, you'll have this to refer back to. So this way, if you're ever doing some paintings, no matter what they are, you know, maybe you're, um, you know, you might have um, somebody that needs some paintings for their house, they, they say, you know, I need a couple paintings for a new uh, room I want to redecorate. You can look back to this and say, oh, I can make some really cool sky washes with some maybe, you know, some uh, shoreline with some sailboats or, um, you know, maybe some uh, skyline, some city building, you know, some beautiful sk skylines of buildings in, in a city type scene. So you, you can create as much uh, interesting ideas, but if you have this to start with, you have this that you know you've done, you've painted, you've thought about, and once you look at it, you'll remember back and you'll say, oh yeah, I remember how I did this, I remember how I did this, this, this. So you'll have it all at your fingertips when you do this type of a compositional uh, chart. And like again, we'll take off the tape when we're done here at the end, we'll relabel things, we'll show you how to do that, and then you'll have this to save in your studio so that you have this when you're, uh, you need to refer back and get some uh, information for some future paintings you're going to do. So let's continue on here. Let's do more of a simple sky wash, which is very effective. A couple of damp, I just dampened my brush with some water and I put a couple of 
brush strokes of clean, fresh, clean water across. That's it. Okay, then I'm going to go and get some cerulean blue, straight cerulean blue. And then let's just go right across. Just straight cerulean blue with some white left in there. Straight cerulean blue. And then a little bit of orange for the bottom. There you go. Beautiful. And that's just your basic a la prima type sky wash, maybe a little bit of wet into wet, a combination of the two. So we could say uh, wet and wet. A la prima combo. You can go in and get some really straight paint. You can actually just Okay, perfect. Now let's get our last one going. Let's do fresh clean water, wet into wet. Get some of that. Just scrub on some fresh clean water. Doesn't have to be everywhere. Just get it on there. That's it. Just a qu couple quick scrubs of the water. Fresh clean water on there. Now we're going to go with more of a warm sky. Let's, let's label this. Wet and wet. Warm sky. There's some uh, water on my Sharpie, so it's not working so great. But we'll just let that go, because we're going to relabel this anyway. So, let's take a look here and say, all right, wet into wet, warm sky. Let's use some greens. Sap green. Uh, olive green, raw umber, raw umber over here, uh, maybe some uh, yellow ochre and raw sienna. Some purple, some cobalt. We're going to use all these colors. Again, let's go right from left to right all the way across. Sap green. Sap green, olive green, viridian, raw sienna, yellow ochre. Then we'll go with some blue, um, cobalt blue, just for a little bit of warm. We're going to keep mostly warm. A little bit of burnt umber there too. And then down here, a little bit of uh, purple, French ultramarine violet. Cobalt blue, French ultramarine blue, and we should have it. Maybe a little bit of a, uh, Prussian blue as well. There we go. We've pre-wet our paper, so this is wet into wet. And let's start out and just kind of see how we go. Let's do some greens and some... Maybe we'll do these on an angle. Same as up here, angled sky wash. Let's do an angled sky wash. More warm, though. Let's do a warmer sky wash. There we go. A little bit of blue in there, here and there. Some burnt sienna. And we just go right across. A little bit of lizard and crimson. more gold looking colors 
And then I'm going to blot up a little bit with my tissue here, just here and there. Some of the uh, raw umber, burnt umber, sap green, olive green. We'll make some greens up here. Can, again, this is a, a very uh, warm looking sky. Um, maybe even a little touch of uh, Payne's Gray and, and uh, the uh, greens and golds. Purples here. And again, you make your own sky colors that you want. Have fun with this. Some lizard and crimson in there too. And again, you can go with some darker darks, straight paint, no water, raw umber, burnt umber, sap green. A couple of darks in there, raw sienna, a couple of... Uh, And then a couple of spots of bright, brighter looking sky. I blot up a little bit of the paint. I dry off my brush after I rinse it. And I just kind of blend it in a little bit. But I want those little bit of bright spots of light. And that's it. That's all we have right there. Simple. So if you think you go a little too dark on your sky wash, Lift up some paint with your tissue. Always remember, keep getting new, clean tissues as you go. So, you know, you can, you don't want to keep putting back in, like, paint back into your painting. And then you can wet the paper again and let some of that flow down. The gold colors. And I think you're going to have a wonderful time creating these. Let's, uh, Let's peel off the tape here and start uh, thinking about relabeling things because that's what we wanted to do. We said we wanted to relabel things. So I'm just going to carefully lift up here. Some of my swatches did not uh, come out completely 100%. Because the the paint leaked underneath the tape. That happens sometimes, you know, you don't want to worry about that too much. So if your paint leaks under your tape, you don't worry about that too much. Uh, we can cover that with white paint. And we're going to do that. We'll show you how to do that right now. So here we have... And please take your time relabeling these. Let's not, we're not going to relabel them right now on this video because you've done all these gorgeous sky washers. You're probably not going to have time to start relabeling, you know, relabeling them right now. So, you know, go back, take your time, watch the video again, and relabel them as you go. I'm just going to lift this up and try to see if we can get a better look at this. Here we go. Let's zoom in a little. Oh, 
Okay, perfect. All right, there we have our sky washes. You saw how we did them. You saw how we labeled them. Relabel them on your own, you know, when you have time and you have a little bit of, you know, uh, extra time, feel free, relabel your, your uh, swatches that we just did. Right now what I'm going to do is just show you, you could take some titanium white like this and uh, take some titanium white and uh, my titanium white is a bit so let's see if we can get some titanium white here on the there we go so I have some titanium white here I'm going to reactivate it with some water And that's all you have to do to maintain your border with your, so if your tape, if your paint leaks under your tape when you do your swatches, you take some titanium white and a little tiny bit of water and you just uh, st straighten up that line there a little bit. Makes it look much better. So there we go. Perfect. Look at that. Same over here. So that's what I'm doing is adding some titanium white. <clears throat> so that's that's the way you uh, fix up the edges on these uh, swatches if you have to. A little bit of water and titanium white, just a touch of water, damp brush actually is all you need. You want to leave that paint super thick so it, it uh, covers the uh, paint washes. There you go. And then over here you can do the same thing too. And this gives you good practice on brush control here. You're going to try to carefully get your, your swatches looking fantastic as you finish up. Just like that. You can even neaten up over here some of the uh, paint that might have... Uh, leaked out around the tape areas, no problem. There's another spot here. No worries, you get your titanium white. Just like that. Up here I see a little bit. Now this becomes a fun exercise of practicing your brush skills tidying up your swatches of your sky washes like so and uh, so nothing is uh, wasted effort you're always something good is always coming from whatever you're doing you're always working towards creating better paintings better brush strokes better washes better compositions, better paintings, everything is all going toward the same goal. So when you're doing a little fix-up exercise like this, doing this with the white paint, you recall that you're just you're practicing your brush strokes and control of getting your uh, your white paint onto the paper carefully to go around your swatches you've just created and uh, to make it look even better. You could leave them with uh, raggedy edges, no big deal. Looks just as good. It depends on the viewer. And I think that is good. Alright, so... I hope you had fun. Again, please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, because we're just doing things like this all the time. We're taking little side... Uh, you know, side roads here and, and doing some interesting things. We're not just doing paintings week after week. We're doing exercises, compositions, fun things like this. Stick with us here. Have fun. Enjoy. And we'll see you on the next video.